Alex the Car Doctor back with another Diag video, good people. Today's patient is a very nice looking 2012 Chevy Tahoe. Patient complaint. He's hearing some type of um, noise, like a humming noise or something. Um, and feeling some type of wobbling. Um, first thing comes to mind, if I can find the keyhole, first thing comes to mind is wheel bearing issue. These trucks are known for wheel bearing problems. Uh, let's see how many miles it have on it. Um, if I can find it. 215. Let's see. There we go. 215. So, quite a few miles. She sounds good. Let's see. Any lights? No lights? Yeah, I know I need to put on my seatbelt, but I'm not ready to drive yet, so chill. <laughs> All right, like I always do is, I would like to make sure the car is safe. I like to rub my hand across the tires, uh, make sure the tires are not, no th uh, wires poking out because you can get yourself really bad. Uh, but these tires, they look in decent shape. I don't see any wire poking out. Uh, don't feel like the wheel is gonna come off. I want to make sure it's safe to drive. They drove it here, but you know, I still like to make sure customers will be like, yeah, give it a drive and uh, you know, the wheel about to come off. I'm like, see, that's why they want to drive your car. <laughs> or it has a big bubble in the tire or something. You know, it feels decent. This is standard procedure at my shop. Now this tire look a little dry rotted. You can see the little dry rot cracks right there. Oh yeah, see it real good, guys. So I don't quite trust this tire. I feel like I feel a bubble right here. Huh. This tire that is questionable. It just don't feel right. Ah, all right. Let's give her a drive and see what we hear. All right. Let's put on my seatbelt for safety, of course. So it won't ding me to, ding me to death. All motor mounts, they're pretty bad. Ooh, need shocks. But I hear it, it's like a, I don't know, bad tire feel. All right, let me finish test driving this. I'll see you guys back at the shop. Guys, that's the worst smell level ever. I stay next to Sterocycle, and that's where they um, I <laughs> cook human remains. I mean, you know, sterilize it, I guess. Uh, you know, amputated toes and legs and whatnot. Dispose of dead animals, and it smells like bologna or something. I can't take it sometimes. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to move. It is horrible. I feel bad for the residents who stay in this area. Yes, that's right. Over that way back there behind the, where those trees at is houses, homes. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's horrible, man. But um, this is what's going on from the test drive. It's definitely a wheel bearing noise because if I shift the weight of the vehicle, like make a slight turn, the noise go away. Um, so I'm about to jack it up and do my shakedown. Of course, I can't get in the shop right now because shop is full. Um, so I'm gonna be working outside for now. No big deal. It's a beautiful day out today. So it's no biggie. Alrighty, have the vehicle up in the air. First thing I wanted to look at and check, check
take this tire for hops. So I simply jack the rear end up, throw it in drive, uh, have someone in the truck just in case it drops so it won't um, take off on you. Or have the front end secure some type of way, which I have. But no hop on this dry rotted it tire. It's just dry rotted. It. Let's check the other one. No, nice and straight. So no problems back there. Let me go ahead and turn this off. All right, now it's time to move on to the front. I've already checked the rear. Um, I already notated the bad tire. So what I'm going to do to check the front end out, I'm just gonna do a shakedown test, moving it side to side, check for, that checks for um, tie rod um, and sometimes lower control arms you can feel bushings loose this way. If you grab it like this and wiggle like so, that check for wheel bearing. But sometimes the noise can be just starting out uh, and it won't have play, but it still can roar. So the next thing you do is just spin the tire real fast like so and listen. That sounds pretty normal. Um, I do hear the bearings is probably, this is probably gonna start making noise somewhere in the near future. So even though it, it, I don't hear it now, I'm gonna recommend it just for preventive maintenance sake. If anything, it's gonna be this one over here. So we're gonna do the same thing. Side to side, up and down, and we're gonna give it a good spin. That's the noise. That's what I hear. Come on, zoom in just in case they can't hear it. That sounds horrible. So that's what I'm hearing on the test drive. Brakes. Flintstone brakes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, I popped the hood. I just like to give a good look around. I noticed his brake fluid was low. Normally when the brake fluid is low like that, the brake pads are, um, are getting real thin. Um, while I was looking at everything, uh, I did look at the brake pads. They seem to be thick. So I'm just gonna top it off. Um, normally, you don't supposed to top off brake fluid because what happened is when you top it off and the next time you go to service it, that brake fluid from the caliper, when you push the caliper back in, it gets pushed back up to the reservoir. And if you topped it off, um, it'll just spill back out. No big deal, but it's kind of wasting brake fluid. Um, in theory, you should never have to add brake fluid. It's a hydraulic fluid. It does not dissipate. If you have to add brake fluid, your brake fluid or uh, if you have to have brake fluid, you either have a brake fluid leak or your brakes are low. So check the belt. Now I have a question mm -hmm. for those myself or anybody at home. If you pull the wheel off and do the wheel bearing, so why are you adding like brake fluid if you don't have to? If you mm, should just just courtesy. Oh okay. Yeah. Because the brake pads look good. They are like above fifty percent mm -hmm. pad life. So I'm assuming whoever changed the brakes last probably opened up the bleeder valve to bleed the brakes and then top it off. Oh okay. Um. So it's a method to your madness. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> now, um, I did tell you guys that the engine is excessively rocking. Um, it needs motor mounts really bad, and I'm gonna film that, show you what I'm talking about. If you continue to neglect that those engine mounts, that excessive rock is gonna start pulling. It's already pulling on this harness. It's gonna continue to pull the harness, pull the harness, pulling the harness, and eventually it's gonna start messing up. You're gonna start having electrical issues. Also, it's harsh on your AC lines. You'll start having freon leaks. Um, you know, stuff will start to wear out. So let me show them what I'm talking about. How bad it That's how 
I check motor mounts, I throw it in drive, the engine will torque um, a certain way. That checks one side of the motor mounts. And this is dealing with real wheel drive cars. It's almost the same dealing with front wheel drive cars, but we're just talking about rear wheel drive cars now. You have two motor mounts on rear wheel drive cars. Um, so it'll rock up one side real bad in drive. And if you throw it in reverse, the engine should rock up the other way. But if it just moved like that, like it did, that means that motor mount is good. So we have one bad motor mount, but we're just not gonna do one. We're gonna do both. Um, it don't make no sense just to do one. You do this stuff in pairs, it's best. Uh, so let me go talk with the customer, see what he wants to do today. And uh, let's see, I, I know he's gonna do a wheel bearing. Um, and I give you guys a little shot on that because I know y'all always come, well, I'm not complaining. Y'all always suggesting that I do the Diag video and the repair. What you think, babe? Yeah. So I'll walk you through the steps of that if he get the work done. All right, I'll be right back. So I just spoke with my service rider. Uh, he's just going to get the driver wheel bearing done today. Um, but that's why I make these videos. Once I educate you, and tell you the, the issue, it's up to you if you want the work done or not. But don't come back saying, oh, a man's doing this. You declined the work. <laughs> she know. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, they call and complain, and, but hey, we're gonna do what we're told, and that's the end of the story. All right, guys, got my little setup here. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver and peel my little cap off here. I never like to face these caps down on the ground because you can scratch them. So I always put them down like so. All right, these should be um, 22, 21 or 22. Let's try 21 first. Nope, it's 22. I'm gonna buzz these off. NASCAR speed or anything, but I made it work. Alright, All right, so I'm going to move y'all inside here so we can show you what we're doing next. Let's see if you can get a good view of what's going on. Let's check that out. Voila. Alrighty, so, and I'm kind of working in a puddle because uh, that's kind of annoying, but it'll be all right. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is remove the caliper bracket, and these appear to be um, 18s. Yep. We're gonna buzz those off. I can get it in the hole. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, I like to put these in a place where it won't fall. Um, and that's going to be in the way of me working. But I want to undo this um, ABS sensor. Um, let me go grab a caliper bracket holder because guys you never you never want to hang a caliper on the brake line like so this brake line has like a nylon cord in it and it will break internally if you hang it and cause to cause the brake line not to hold the pressure and eventually bust it'll swell up bust most of the time at the wrong time when you're trying to stop so we don't we don't want that um so let me go get the caliper bracket hanger so i can just hang it up out my way a caliper bracket hanger i'm just gonna place this somewhere out the way voila 
think that should be good. Maybe not. Let me reposition it. happy with that. That's going to work. Now, let me take y'all along for the ride. All right. All right. So we have this ABS connector. Normally, GM have these little silly security clips. Um, all right. Come on, focus. There we go. So basically, you just push up. Huh. I have to use two hands on this. All right, come on. Uh, here we go. I can use two hands. I'm gonna take my flat head because it's being a nuisance. Ah, oh, and that's the thing about working with dry rotted stuff, guys. Sometimes this stuff breaks and it gets stuck on there. But it's supposed to just pull back and release the lock, but I hate these security clips sometimes. Uh, there we go. Anywho, guys, it's supposed to work like you slide the little clip back and you're able to push down on the little release. But the lock broke on me. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just undo this. Um, I do believe the new box has the the new clips and everything, so I can probably just snatch them right out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see, being lazy again, I don't want to go grab my. Um, I have the special tool for this, but. Sometime when I'm working, I don't like to stop and I just use what I have. All right, let me set y'all back up over here. All right. All right, so I got to bring you back in front and I always forget about this tool. I'm going to need a T30. Um, I'm going to show you the reason being in a little bit. Yeah, let me go in and move the rotor. So, the dealer, I believe, like to bolt the rotor on for assembly line purposes. Um, so the rotor won't fall off as it's going down the assembly line. That's the only reason I can think of them bolting, using this bolt to hold the rotor on. Other than that, it really doesn't serve any purpose, um, in my opinion. So I'm going to go grab, it appears to be a T30. Um, and buzz that off so I can pull the rotor off. All right, so I got my T30. This should just come right off nice and easy. That normally never give me a hard time. Only Honda give me a hard time. And there we go. Ugh. That down nice and easy. Ooh, that sound horrible. All right, put y'all back. So y'all can get a good view. All right. So these should be some 15s. I should just be able to buzz them right off. No big deal. And I'm at the switch. All right, that was too big. Now these normally can just break them loose nice and easy. Um, as you can see, I'm using a half inch drive on a 15 with some leverage. Sometimes you have to get a long bar to easily get this stuff off. And the torque spec is gonna be 133 foot pounds for these back bolts here. All 
All right. Will not like so. The next step, sometimes you have to take a hammer and bang it out. If, ooh, but in this case, it just fell out. Now, most important thing is remembering the orientation of this backing plate. Uh, you can install it backwards. And if you do that, it'll be, let me see. I don't even, yeah, you can install it backwards. So a tip would be to like, get some white out and before you remove this stuff put a B for back and if you want you can put an F for front so you won't get it confused because I've seen guys do that and when they do that they have to take it all back apart all right so here's the new part right here um Yes, it did come with the new push pins. All right, got a little wet on it. So, uh, I think I might got mixed up. <laughs> uh, I think I have, yeah, I have. All right, it goes like this. It kind of fell off and So how I just put it back up in place. Now I'm just gonna thread these up by hand. Just so it'll hold itself in place. The backside bolts I'm talking about, the 15s that I just showed removing, me removing them. And now I'm gonna run the cord. And this is a pretty easy job. You should be able to do this at home. Just make sure you follow the correct procedures like I'm showing. or you'll be working twice. No one likes to work twice. All right, push pin that in place. Mm, get in there. And it's set up. And it Everything looks good. Toss that to the side. See how nice and quiet it is. Hopefully you can still hear me. I got a truck or something, tow truck out here doing some work. So I'm gonna run these up with my 3 8 and then I'm gonna grab my torque wrench and torque them down. back on the rotor don't want to forget that step I'm going to install the little um, screw thingy again let me show you so there's the screw hole boom let's try to do this with one hand voila grab my screw Uh, 
right. He's trying to hold his camera and do this at the same time. Take some skills. <laughs> Just zizz that down nice and gentle. You don't have to be hard with it. Um, now, this next part is the caliper and bracket. Um, make sure you still can see. Yep. All right. Now, when putting this on, you gotta make sure you don't twist this line right here. You wanna make sure it's not like so. Let me show you an example. That right there is a twisted line. You can kind of see how it's doing a little squiggly, like it's making an S shape. You don't want that. Twist this back around the right way. You want it to look like so nice and straight now when putting these back on you want to make sure your brake pads are properly spread out uh, you make sure you don't want to make sure they have fallen in place i mean not falling but uh, come on camera yeah so you just want to make sure they're nice and seated so they'll go back in between the rotor like so all right so i'm gonna put you back down here i'm gonna thread these up by hand um if i can find the, the bolts for it hold on oh right here Now I'm gonna hit these with my gun because I don't play around when it comes to caliper bracket bolts. I'm going to give it a good, good hammer. Um, plus it was still some Loctite on there, so I wasn't worried about them backing off. Um, but mm, that's all she wrote, good people. Just gotta put back on the wheel and this job is done. So, set you up here, grab the wheel. Next thing I'm gonna do is run them up. Um, I'm gonna turn my gun on the low setting because uh, I just wanna run them up because I'm gonna torque these wheels. And I grabbed the 21. I don't know what's up with me in 21. So that is ran up. I normally like to torque these down to about 80 um, to be on the safe side. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. But before I do that, I have to let down the truck so I can, so the wheel won't be spinning while I'm trying to torque it down. Down we go. Now, I did look it up real quick. It is actually 140. Um, I guess 80 is for little cars or whatnot. Um, so we're gonna crank that bad boy up to 140. Cause this is a big truck. So I guess they don't want the wheel to go anywhere. 
Voilà. And we gotta make sure it's going the right way. And my torque wrench turned off for some reason. Come on, man. Turn it off at the wrong time. I don't know, my batteries must be dead or something. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to a little crisscross pattern here. Very important so you can get even clamping force. Don't want no wheels coming off. All right, so I'm gonna finish torquing these down. All right, last step. Um, sometimes this goes on a specific way. Normally I have a valve stem cap telling you this, line this up with the valve stem. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And boom, perfect. So just gotta pick up all my tools and my mess and get out this water puddle and I'll be golden. Most important step of the job, good people. Verify the complaint and it was, you know, verify the job was repaired correctly and the complaint is no more. That's what I was trying to say. Um, as I'm driving here, everything feels good. Uh, no more roaring. Um, it's a job well done. See you guys back at the shop. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Um, job well done, like I mentioned before. Test drove it, no more noise. She's golden. So let me go ahead and give this customer back their keys. Until next time, see ya. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Show y'all support. Alex Car Doctor out.